Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to play The Goonies Never Say Die. This is a new game from Funko Games. It is a 2 to 5 player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play, and is a 1 versus many game, which means that one player is going to be controlling the GM or Goondocks Master, controlling all the enemies and trying to stop the Goonie players from meeting their objectives while he's trying to meet his objective. On the other side, all the rest of the players are going to be playing the Goonies, working together to solve and meet the objectives of whatever adventure they're currently on. So in the video, I'm going to teach you how to play, starting with components, setup, the Goonies round, and the, the Goondocks master round. If you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to update on all my videos, also considering that bell so your notifications anytime I release new stuff. I also have a link up at the top corner if you'd like to check out a full playthrough video to give a, get a good idea how this game plays. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. There are three custom sets of dice included in the game. First, let me go over the symbols you'll find on these dice. So each set is going to have a single bone on it, which will count as one success. The blue and green will have a pair of double bones, which is going to count as two successes. All three sets will have a single skull, which is going to give the Goondax Master a skull token, and all three sets will also have a number of blank sides, which are going to count as nothing. From there, let me break down each one of the dice and give you the symbols on there. So with the D6 red dice, they are going to have three sides with a single bone, one side with a skull, and two sides with a blank. With the blue D8s, they are going to have three sides with a single bone, two sides with a double bone, one side with a skull, and two sides with a blank. Finally, with the green D12s, they are going to have six sides with a single bone, three sides with a double bone, one side with a skull, and two sides with a blank. There are a number of different sets of cards included in the game as well. The first set I have are the item cards, and these will be able to be gained by the Goonie players at certain points throughout the game. Each one of these items is going to be a single-use item that will list the name of that item on it, and then the ability of that item when it's used. And these are going to range with all kinds of different effects, including healing, gaining wish tokens, and even being able to destroy rubble and a number of other things. Throughout the game, Goonie players will also have access to treasure cards, and these will give the players powerful new abilities. Each of these cards is going to list the name of the card and then the effect of it, with some of the cards giving players certain passive abilities, where other cards will list that they have to spend an action in order to carry out that ability. The Goonie players also have access to the teenagers Bran, Steph, and Andy. Each one of these is a single-use card that when used will be flipped over and will give that player an additional green D12 die, up to the maximum of three dice that they can roll. From there, then they'll flip it over once it is used, and there will be certain points throughout the game that players will be able to flip these cards back over, and I'll explain that more later in the video. Legendary treasure cards will be used in certain scenarios. Each one of these cards will list the name of that card and which of the adventures that card is used in, as well as any other information on it. Each Goonies player is going to control one or more Goonies throughout the game, and each Goonie is going to have its own tile that will list the name of that Goonie on the top, along with that Goonie's hit points and maximum number of wish tokens that Goonie can have at the end of the round. Then each Goonie is going to have three different stats for Strength, Dexterity, and Search. Each one of these stats will list a pair of dice that that Goonie will roll when doing that check. And each Goonie is going to have one or more special abilities that we'll be able to use throughout the game. Some Goonies, such as Data and Mouth, will also have their own special deck of cards that they're going to use throughout the game as well. And the, the way that they are used is going to be outlined on those Goonies tiles. Moving over to the Goondocks Master, they have two different types of enemies that they'll be able to deploy throughout the game to try to stop the Goonies. The first are foes, and each one of the foes will have their own card that'll list the name of that foe on the top, along with the number of hit points it has. Some foes will have a special ability that they will trigger at certain points, and then each one will list the attack and the type of dice that it will roll when it performs that attack action. The Goondocks Master also has access to three bosses that are included in the game. The Fratellis, One-Eyed Willy, and the Octopus. Each one of these will have their own tile that will list the name of that boss and it, the number of hit points it has, and the dice it's going to roll when making an attack, along with any special abilities it has. And some of the boss enemies will even have their own small deck of cards that will go with them. The Goondocks Master also has access to their own GM deck. And this is going to contain 24 basic cards. Each one of these cards will list the name of that card, and then most of the cards are going to give the GM player an option of when to use that card. They can use the card during their turn to carry out the action listed below it, 
or they can also use the card as reaction doing, during the Goonies turn and then carry out the action that's listed there. There will be a couple of cards included in the deck as well that are going to have the Hourglass marker on them. And these will have specific actions or be able to be triggered at certain points to take an end of nigh roll, and I'll cover those more in detail later. During some of the adventures, you'll also be able to add adventure GM cards, and these will be specific to each adventure, and they will list up in the top corner the die, as well as which adventures those cards will be added to. And these will work the same way as the other cards in the deck. From there, let's go ahead and move into setup. So first off, what you want to do is place out the main game board with the Goondocks Master side facing the Goondocks Master player. From there, you're also going to want to place out all the dice you're going to be using for this game in reach of all players. So we'll go and place these over here. And you'll also want to place out all the different tokens you're going to be using for this game. Go ahead and place the hourglass tile out and also place the sand tokens on there. Then place out the three teenager cards in reach of the Goonies players. So I'll place those up top here. And then you also go ahead and shuffle up and place out the items deck and treasure deck. I'm going to place those next to those cards up there. From there, then I'm going to move into player setups. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Goonies players. If you're only having one player play Goonies, then that player will select two Goonies to play. If you're playing with more than one Goonies player, then each player can choose to have one Goonie, or they can control multiple if they choose to as well. So for my game, I'm going to go ahead and set up for three players, and I've selected to have Chunk, Data, and Mikey play. So each one of the Goonies will place out their tile. If the Goonie has any extra cards or anything, go ahead and place those out as well. So Data has a token as well as his nine or his six cards, and you'll start with those face up. So I'm going to go ahead and place those out. Each one of the Goonies players will also receive wish tokens up to their wish limits or their max on their cards and their miniatures. So Chunk will start with three wish tokens. Data will have three as well, and Mikey will have four. Each player will also get their own reference guide for the turn. All right, at this point, then we're going to move over to the Goondocks Master and cover their setup. So for those of you that are playing the Goonies players and you don't want anything spoiled, please go ahead and step out of the room or skip ahead in this video at this point, as I am going to be covering some spoilers for this very first adventure and showing the Goondocks Master how to set it up and all of the details of their adventure book. All right, you've been warned, so let's get into it. First, let's go ahead and start with the adventure guide. So each adventure in the book is going to have two pages, a left page and a right page. On the left page, it's going to list the number of that adventure along with the title. Then you're going to have the adventure's map that's going to outline all the different rooms and their setup instructions throughout the game as the Goonie players explore them. Now, you will not set up all of this at the beginning of the game, and I'll go through more of how that works in a minute. From there, then you have the introduction, and this is the text you're going to read to the Goonies players to set the mood for this adventure. Underneath that is going to be additional setup instructions for this adventure. It's going to include the adventure GM cards, and this particular one does not use any, and I'll explain how that works during that part of the setup. From there, then it's going to list any special components you need for this adventure, so you would need to grab the Copper Bones Legendary Treasure Card, as well as the Moss Garden Wishing Well. With these two items, you can either keep them behind your screen, or simply leave them in the game box until you need them. It also is going to list the foes you're going to need for this adventure, so you'll need the Giant Rats and the Bat Swarms, and again, you can keep all of these behind your screen, or you can keep them in the box, whichever is more convenient for you. Underneath that is going to be the Wandering Foe for this adventure, which is going to be the Bat Swarms. And this is very important, as some of the GM cards are going to allow you to spawn a Wandering Foe, and for this adventure, that will be the Bat Swarms. Going back to the map tile, you're going to notice that some of the rooms are numbered, and this does not mean that the Goonie players have to explore the room in any particular order. It just means when they move into a room with a number on it, the first time they explore that room and that room is revealed, it is going to reference with an explanation point that there is text on the right hand page. Now on this page, you're going to at the top of the page, you're going to have the starting goals for the Goonies as well as for the GM. So you're going to read those to all the players so everybody is familiar with the starting goals. 
Now, as the adventure goes on, there will be new objectives that are going to be revealed later on, and the text is going to outline when the GM is going to read those. Going back to the room numbers, some of the rooms are going to list a number with an exclamation point, which is referenced on this page. So as you can see, when a player explores the room two for the first time, there's going to be some text that you're going to read for that. There's also a secret in there, which you will not reveal to the players until the player triggers that. For this room, if a Goonies player rolls three or four or more successes when searching the pirate stash token, then they are going to reveal the secret passage in this room and then you would read that text. If they don't, then you simply will not reveal this text at all and they've simply missed the opportunity to find that secret. Now that you understand how the adventure guide works, let's go ahead and move into the rest of the Goondock Master setup. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and create the Goondock Master deck of cards, the GM cards. So this deck is going to consist of 24 basic cards that are going to be used in every single game. And then certain adventures are again are going to list any adventure GM cards that are going to be added to this deck. And again, these cards will have a specific icon, as you can see here, in the top left hand corner of each card. So for the first adventure, you're simply going to use the deck of 24 cards. Go ahead and shuffle this deck up and place it off to the side where you can draw from it. From there, then you're going to draw one of these cards per Goonie player that's out there, per Goonie that's being played. So in this adventure, I'll go ahead and start off my game with three cards in my hands, and I'll also gain three GM tokens of the Skull tokens. Now this is common knowledge for all the players, so that the Goonie players will always get to know how many of the Skull tokens you have and how many GM cards you have in your hand at all times. From there, then you can place out your screen, and this is a great handy reference for the GM player as this has all of the rules, references of the foes that are going to be used, the Goonies round sequence as well as your round sequence, and then a token reference for all the rules for the token. So this is a great guide for this. You'll go ahead and place this in front of you, and you can keep the foes and all the special items behind this that you need. Again, you will have to show the Goonie players how many GM tokens you have and cards you have in your hand at all times. From there, then you're going to go ahead and set up the board itself. So with the start of an adventure, you're only going to set up the very first room that lists the start token on it, and you'll place passages that lead out of that room, but you will not set up any other rooms. So first off, we're going to place that start token on that passage. And then it, that room also is going to need a pirate treasure token. Then it does have one passage leading out to it, which is a regular passage. So we're going to go ahead and place that one out. And then the next room that that passage leads into will also place an unexplored token. If there are multiple passages that leads in multiple rooms, each room is going to have an unexplored token. So again, we only have the one passage that leads to room the room two. So that is the only room that will get the unexplored token. And we will not set up anything else for this particular adventure yet until the Goonie players start exploring. You also want to keep this out of the Goonie player site. So keep that behind your screen so that the Goonie players cannot see that. From there, then the Goonies players can place their figures in the starting location. And the final thing the GM player is going to do is read the introduction for this particular adventure. If you're playing Adventure 1, also read the It All Starts Here text on page 3, and then also go over the starting goals for the Goonies players, as well as let them know what your goal is for this particular adventure as well. From there, we're ready to move into the game. Goonies has played over an undefined number of rounds. The rounds are going to alternate starting with the Goonie players taking their round first and all the players getting to go. Once the Goonies round is done, then it'll move over to the GM to take their round. This is going to continue alternating back and forth until one of the objectives is met. For the Goonie players, this objective might not be revealed at the beginning of an adventure, and that's okay. As the Goonie players explore the map, the GM is going to reveal new objectives throughout the adventure. For the GM, their objective is always the same. They're trying to delay the Goonie players long enough that they can move all four of the sand markers to the bottom of the sand, tra or sand hourglass. And to be if they begin a turn and all four of the markers are at the bottom of the hourglass, then the GM has won and defeated the Goonie players. Before getting into the Goonies round, there's a couple of important concepts that I want to cover. First is dice checks, and there, this is going to apply to both the Goonie players and the Goondocks Master, as there's going to be a number of situations throughout the game where the players are going to make dice checks. For the Goonie players, they have three different stats, including Strength, Dexterity, and Search. 
Each one of these stats is going to list the type of dice and the number of dice they're going to roll for that check. So for example with Mikey, if he makes a dexterity check, he's going to roll two blue dice. A lot of the different checks are going to list a number next to them as well, which is the number of successes that a player must roll in order to pass that check. Each success that, or each roll that shows a bone is going to count as one success, and the crossbones are going to count as two successes. If a player or Goondock Master roll the skull symbol, then the Goondock Master is going to gain a GM token for each one of those symbols that comes up. And this is going to apply, again, whether it's a Goonie player or the Goondock Master that rolls them. So, for example, with a Dexterity 2 check, if a player rolls this result, then they have rolled three successes and passed that check. Now, there's going to be a number of different ways that the players are going to be able to modify their dice, as well as get help from other players that I'm going to cover next. Before rolling for dice checks, there's a couple of different ways the players can modify their rolls. The first is upgrading dice. In order to do this, the player must spend a token to do so. For the Goonie players, they must spend a wish token. And for the GM, he must spend a GM token. Each token the player spends allows them to upgrade one die to one higher level. Red dice will be upgraded to blue dice, and blue dice will be upgraded to green. Green are the highest dice in the game, so they cannot be upgraded. So going back to our example earlier with Mikey, if he makes a dexterity check, and let's say he has a really hard one where he needs a dexterity 3, he may choose to upgrade his dice. He can do that by again spending a wish token and replacing a die with a higher level die. You can do this with both of them, so I could spend another token to upgrade this blue to a green as well. For the Goonie players, there's a couple of additional ways that they can help each other. The first is teamwork, so if a Goonie is in the same space as another Goonie, they can ask that Goonie for help. If that Goonie agrees, that Goonie will spend one of their wish tokens, and then give that player a die of the matching stat that they're testing for. So going back to our previous example with Mikey, he's making a dexterity check. He has two blue dice, one of which he upgraded to a green. He's in the same space as Data, so he asks Data for help. Data can spend a wish token and then give him one of his die of the matching stat. So he would give Mikey one blue die from his dexterity. Now the important there's a couple important things with this. First off, if a die is shared through teamwork, that die cannot be upgraded. So Mikey could choose cannot choose to spend a wish token to upgrade that blue to a green. Another important thing is that a player can never roll more than three dice for any check. So Mikey cannot get teamwork from multiple players, and Mikey must always roll the dice that are for his check. So he must always roll his two dice. He cannot choose to get teamwork from multiple players and use their dice for that roll. So only one player can ever help another player out. There is a couple of important exceptions to this. First off, when removing rubble tokens from a blocked passage or when moving through a dangerous passage, a Goonie may ask for teamwork from a Goonie in either room connected to that passage. So for example, with Mikey, if he's removing rubble tokens from this passage here, he could ask for help from Data since it is in a connected room. Likewise, if Data is trying to move through this dangerous passage here, he could ask Chunk for help in doing that. The final way a Goonie player can get help is by using a Teenager card of the matching stat. So with Mikey making that Dexterity check, he could choose to use the Andy card and gain a green die for his check. Once he uses that card, he's going to be flipped face down and then he'll add that die to his area. Again, you can never roll more than three dice for a check, so if you use a Teenager card, you cannot also gain help from a, another Goonie player. The teenager cards will only ever be flipped face up again when one of the hourglass markers is moved down on the hourglass. And then at that point you would choose one of the teenager cards to flip back face up, if you've used any at that point. Now we're ready to move into the game, so we're going to go ahead and start with the Goonie round. So each Goonie round consists of five steps that are going to be done in order. The first step is that each Goonie is going to receive a wish token. This will not happen during the very first Goonie round of the game. Then each Goonie is also going to flip over their board to its face up side. Next, each one of the Goonies is going to activate, taking their turn. They can do this in any order they choose, and when a Goonie activates, they can perform two actions during their turn from a list of actions. They can also use any items or treasure cards they have and activate any special abilities on their card. And I'm going to go through each one of these in more detail to show you how this works. 
So first, let's start by talking about the actions a player can perform. During a player's turn, that player is allowed to perform two actions from a list of actions, and they can take the same action twice if they want to. These actions include moving, searching, attacking, rest, treasure action, and adventure action. So let's go ahead and start by looking at a move action. A move action allows a goonie to move from their room to an adjacent room, and rooms are considered adjacent if they are connected by a passage that does not contain rubble. So this room is adjacent to this room currently, as there are no rubble tokens on that passage, but if there was, then these rooms would not be considered adjacent. If a goonie moves into a room that has an unexplored token, then they must pause their turn, and the GM will populate that room with new tokens and enemies and other passages, and I'll explain this in a minute. There's also three different types of passages included in the game. You'll have regular passages that are, I already explained. Then there are dangerous passages which have the dexterity symbol on them. In order to use a dangerous passage, a player must make a dexterity check of one. If they roll one or more successes, then they are able to move through there as normal. If they fail that check, then they are going to stay in the room that they currently are in and they lose that action. If they have another action remaining, they can try that again. And then the final type of passage is a secret passage. And these are only going to be revealed if certain conditions are met by the Goonie players, and the GM will reveal those at that point in time. Otherwise, these passages work exactly the same way as regular passages. At this point, let's look at an example of this. So we'll say it's Mikey's turn, and as his first action, he's going to move into this adjacent room that's connected by this passage. He moved into an unexplored room, so this token will be removed, and his turn is going to be paused. At this point, then the GM player is going to consult the adventure map and populate that room with any tokens and read any narrative or flavor text that's attached to that room. So as you can see as the GM, this room does have some flavor text, so you will read that. And then you're going to place out a pirate treasure token. And you can see that there's an enemy in here. We have swarms of bats. And there is a two on there, which means that you're going to place out two bat swarm tokens. Since this is the first foe that is out, you'll also place the Bat Swarm Foe reference card out for the players to consult so that they always know how that works. Finally, you're going to place connecting passages to other rooms. So we do have a passage leading into this room here, and you'll place an unexplored token in that. Now, also note that there is a secret passage connected to this room, which you will not place at this point. This is only going to be placed if certain conditions are met. So as you can see here on the right side page, it, it does give you detailed instructions on how to reveal that. So if a Goonie does a search action and rolls three or more successes, at that point, then you will reveal the secret passage and read the narrative and flavor text for that. From here, then Mikey can take his second action. He can continue moving as enemies are not going to impair his movement. So he could choose to move into this space here and explore this room or move back in with his fellow goonies and get ready to handle the bad swarms. A goonie can perform a search action if they're in the same room as a token that has a lantern symbol on it, such as the bone pile or pirate stash. In order to carry this action out, the goonie is going to announce to the GM which token they are searching and then they'll do a search check. So for example, with Mikey being in this room with a pirate stash, we're going to go ahead and search that. So he'll announce that and then he'll gather up his dice under his search. So he's going to get two green dice and then he's also going to ask Data for some help. So Data will discard one of his wish tokens and give Mikey a blue die. From there, we're going to go ahead and roll them. And we did very well with six successes. Now. No matter the result on the dice, you're always going to gain an item card for each search that you do. And then if you roll two or more successes, you're also going to gain a treasure card from the supply. Once you've completed the action, the token is going to be removed if it's a pirate stash. If it's a bone pile, it'll be flipped over to its other side with the exclamation point. A bone pile that has an exclamation point face up cannot be searched by a Goonie player. A rest action will get a Goonie another wish token. If a Goonie has a treasure card that shows action on the card, they must spend a treasure action in order to carry out the ability on that card. A Goonie can take an adventure action to overcome an obstacle, such as removing rubble from a passage or if they have a trap token on them. In the situation where they're removing rubble, they're going to make a strength check and for each success that they roll, they're going to remove one of the rubble tokens. 
If a Goonie has a trapped token next to them, then they are trapped, and while trapped, a Goonie can only take an adventure action, which will allow them to make a Dexterity 1 check. If they pass, they escape and remove the trap token. If not, then they will leave the trap token next to them and must try again. And Goonies cannot give teamwork when trapped. And then some adventures will also provide special adventure actions for that particular adventure that the GM is going to let you know about. If a Goonie is in the same room as one or more enemies, they can do an attack action against those enemies. In order to do this, the Goonie is going to nominate which enemy he's going to attack, and then he'll do a strength check. So with Mikey, he'll attack a Bat Swarm, so he's going to gather his two red dice. You can upgrade these dice as normal by spending wish tokens, or you can ask other Goonies that are in the same room as you for teamwork to help out. Mikey is going to spend one wish token to upgrade one of his blue, uh, reds to a blue, and then he's going to go ahead and roll against that Bat Swarm. So let's see what we get. Wow, he did really well with three hits. So for each success that you roll, you deal one damage to that enemy, and each enemy is going to have a number of hit points on it that is both on its token as well as on its reference. If you do enough damage to an enemy, you are going to remove that enemy, and you'll gain a wish token for defeating that foe. If not, you'll place a number of hit tokens next to that enemy. If, for example, an enemy has a number of hits on it already, and you roll, say, this result where you do more damage to the enemy than is required, that, is, that, enemy, that damage is simply wasted and is not conferred over to another enemy in the same room, unless an ability or other skill says otherwise. I also want to go over real quick enemies attacking Goonies, as this is going to be important for Goonie players, and I'll cover this in more detail during the GM turn. So let's say, for example, this Bat Swarm is going to attack Mikey. Each foe is going to list the dice that it's going to gain, and the GM can also spend GM tokens to upgrade those dice as normal. Once a GM has their dice, they're going to go ahead and roll them, and we got two results. So at this point, Mikey is going to take two damage, and there is two different options that Mikey can do. He can simply take the damage, adding the damage tokens to his board, or he can spend a wish token to prevent one point of damage, and he can do that any number of times, as many wish tokens as he has. So Mikey could take two damage, he could spend two wish tokens to prevent that two damage, or he can take one damage and spend a wish token. It's however the player wants to do it. During a Goonies turn, they can also use any item cards that they have in their hands. Each item card is a single use and will be discarded after the Goonie uses it, and certain item cards, such as Bubblegum, will list that you can remove a damage from any Goonie in your room, and this is including the Goonie that is carrying the item. You can use items and some treasure cards that don't require an action, even after you've used your two actions, or even if a Goonie starts their turn with a stun token on them. Goonies also have special abilities, with some of them being passive abilities such as Mikey's Pirate Lore, which allows him to gain a wish token anytime he rolls the GM symbol or skull symbol on a die, as well as the GM gaining their own token. Other Goonies, such as Data, will have special cards that will require him to spend an action, but then he gets to use that card and flip it over as each card is a one use only. And then the last thing I want to go over is if a Goonie ever takes enough damage equal to their health. Goonies never say die, so a Goonie is never eliminated from the game. So let's say, for example, that that Bat Swarm is attacking Mikey and gets two more successes. Mikey is out of wish tokens, and so he's going to have to take damage for that. So he'll place the damage down, and now he has damage equal to or greater than his health. At this point, Mikey is down, so the GM is going to get to move a sand marker down on the hourglass. And because of that, if one of the players had used any of the teenager cards, they could choose to flip one of those back to its face upside. From there, then, Mikey is not allowed to be hit at this point anymore. And at the end of the GM's round, Mikey will remove all of the hit points on his character and add them back to the supply. If Mikey had a trapped or stunned token on him, he would remove those as well. And then during the next Goonie round, Mikey can perform his actions as normal again. At this point, we've gone through all the different actions that a Goonie can play during their turn. So let's put it all together and take you through one example turn real quick. So let's go ahead and go ahead and activate Mikey. So first off, he's got that pirate stash in there. Let's go ahead and spend our first action to search that. So with Mikey, he's going to get two green dice for that. And I am going to ask for some help from Data. So he is going to give me a 
blue die as well, so I can roll all three, as getting treasure items are very important. They're very powerful items, so any chance you get, you definitely want one of those if you can help it. All right, and I got three successes, so that's good. I will get an item. I always get an item, and I have my wish, so this is good. That'll give me a couple of wish tokens if I need them. And I've got the Pirate's Cutlass. Whenever you take an attack action, upgrade a die for free. Awesome. Very nice. Okay. This is going to be removed. And as my second action, I will move through this room, through this passage, into an unexplored room. So again, at this point, then the GM is going to tell me what happens. So with that room, that is... You enter the remnants of an old mining shaft. The large chamber is filled with a green-tinged copper and rusting steel pipes. Then the GM is going to fill the room, so we have two of the bat swarms in there, as well as a pirate stash. All right, and that'll be Mikey's turn as he has performed both of his actions. So then we will flip his card over, and it'll start a new Goonies turn. So then let's go with Chunk next. So he's going to spend his first action to move in, and then his second action, he's going to attack. Now, he does have a couple of special abilities. He has Captain Chunk, so whenever Chunk spends a wish token to upgrade a die, he may upgrade two dice instead. And then he also has Riled Up. Well, if Chunk is given teamwork when making an attack action, he may divide any damage dealt between any foes in his room. So those are both really good abilities of his. So his second action, he's going to attack, and he'll attack this bat swarm here. He is going to get two blue dice, and he will spend a token to upgrade. So because of his captain chunk, he gets upgrade two dice, so he'll upgrade those to green. And then he is also going to ask for some teamwork, so Mikey is going to assist and give him a red die. That way then if he does really well, then we can split that damage up. He got two successes, so he's going to deal two damage to that Bat Swarm. And that is all he can do at this point. So then his turn is over, so we'll flip his card over. And then let's go ahead and say that we go ahead and go with Data as well. So we're just going to move him in there. And he was able to finish off this Bat Swarm as his second action he would attack. So I'm just going to sky through, flip through that real quick and say that we had taken care of that. Now, after all of the Goonies have gone, there's a couple of things that they're going to, all of them as a group are going to handle. First off, each player, that sh each Goonie that shares the same room as another Goonie can trade any items or treasure with those Goonies. These don't have to be fair trades or anything like that. I can give cards over to my fellow Goonies if I want to, but all of the Goonies that are in the same room or share rooms can share and trade items and treasure cards. Once all the players are done with that, then all players must discard down to two treasure cards each, as no player can hold more than two treasure cards at a time. Once the players are done with that, they're also going to discard down to their maximum number of wish tokens, as each player has a maximum that is listed on their card, as you can see here. Once the players are all done with that, then the Goonies turn or Goonies round is over, and we're ready to move into the GM round. Now before doing that, there is one mistake that I made when setting up this room real quick during the Goonies last turn. I forgot to place a passage leading into the next room, as well as an unexplored token into that room itself. So from there, the Goondocks Master's turn is going to, or round, consists of four steps that are going to be done in order. The very first step in that round is the Goondocks Master is going to gain a new GM token. So he'll add that to his supply. Then, after that, then he is going to activate all of the foes on the board. He is going to, this is a two-step process. The first step is that you will move all of the foes up to one space. Now, they do not have to move, so with my Bat Swarm in here, he's already ready to attack those Goonies, so he doesn't have to move that Swarm. But if there was other enemies on the board, they can move. Now, when moving enemies, it works exactly the same way as Goonies, with a couple of exceptions. First, enemies are not going to be affected by pit tokens or by dangerous passages. They don't have to roll for dexterity. They simply move right on over those. The one exception to that is that foes cannot move through rubble tokens. So if a passage is blocked by rubble tokens, the foe cannot move through that. The one exception to that is a boss foe who can negate or not attack in order to remove all the rubble tokens on a passage. Once you have moved all of the foes on the board, 
then you are going to move into the second step of the enemy activation where each foe is going to attack. So each foe must choose their target again, and if there are multiple goonies in the same space, you must choose one goonie to attack. Now, if there are multiple foes in the same space, each foe must attack a different goonie if there's more than one goonie in the space. In this way, as the goonie players, you want to make sure that you kind of stay bunched up. That way, then the foes cannot pick you off and all attack at one goonie. So in this situation, if I had two goonies in here and two foes, each foe would have to attack a separate goonie. If I had only one goonie in here, both foes could attack just the one goonie. All right, so then attacking is going to again work the same way as the Goonies. I'll consult my reference card, so I'm going to roll the two red dice. I again can spend GM tokens to upgrade those dice to higher level dice, so I could upgrade these to blues or even upgrade one die all the way up to a green if I wanted to by spending a couple of tokens. I think I'm good there, so I'm going to go ahead and roll this, and I will go after Chunk and see what happens with that. I rolled a GM symbol, so I will get another GM token to add to my stash, and I rolled one wound on Chunk. So Chunk is going to have an option then. He can either take the damage or he can spend his wish token. So Chunk is gonna go ahead and spend his wish token to discard and, and avoid that damage. That is all the foes that I have, and if you don't have any foes on the board, then you'll simply skip over the attack step. The third step in the GM's turn is to draw one card and add it to their hands. After they have done this, they can choose to spend GM tokens to draw additional cards into their hand, one GM token per card they wish to draw. So I think I will. I'll spend a GM token and draw an additional card into my hands. And again, I can continue doing that if I want to, as long as I have the tokens to spend. Now, you must draw all the cards you wish to in this step before playing any cards. So once you start playing cards, you will not be able to spend GM tokens to draw additional cards. The final step in the GM's turn is that you get to play a card for free. So I can choose a card in my hands and resolve the GM turn part of that card. And then after that, I can choose to spend additional GM tokens, one token per card that I wish to play, so I can continue playing additional cards. The one important note with that is you can never play the same card or the, a, the two cards of the same name. So for example, in my hand right now, I have Falling Boulders, I have Abrupt Cave-In, Sinkhole, Daunting Vigor, and another Falling Boulders. So I could not choose to play both of the Falling Boulders during this turn. But I could play one of each of the other cards. So as the GM, let's go ahead and start with... Let's go ahead and play the Falling Boulders. This is going to be my free card that I'm going to play during this turn. And as the GM part of it, it says that I can place a Wandering Foe in an explored room without a Goonie. So the only room that's been explored that doesn't have any Goonies in it is that room there. But if there are no rooms that are, or that are explored without Goonies, then I cannot play this. So then I can go ahead and do that. And that'll be discarded. And at this point, then I can choose to spend a GM token to play another card if I want to. And I think I'm going to pass at this point and hold on to what I have. Now, again, there are reactions to each one of these cards as well that I can play during the Goonies turns. Important note with that is that I do not have to spend a GM token to use the, the card for its effect on the reaction part during the Goonies turns. And each one of the cards will outline when that can be played. For example, let's look at an example of this. So on Abrupt Cave-In, this card says, as a reaction, after a Goonie moves through a passage, I can place a Rubble token on that passage. So when a Goonie takes an action to move through a passage, then I can play that reaction card and trigger that effect. Now once I'm done with my turn and I choose not to do anything else, the last step in my turn is to discard down to five cards so I can never have more than five cards in my hand at any time. Once I'm done with that, then my turn will end and it'll move back over to the next Goonie round for the Goonies to start. Now there's a couple of important things I'd like to cover with this. First off, there are going to be three basic cards in the basic GM deck that are going to be to allow you to do a end is nigh roll. These are Willie's Deceit, Willie's Ruination, and Willie's Milediction. So each one of these cards is going to have two conditions on it, as you can see. If the player, if the GM is able to meet the top condition, then he doesn't have to pay any more of the 
GM tokens to play this card. Otherwise, you can always choose to pay two of the GM tokens to play one of these cards. Inch is going to have different con conditions, such as with Melly, uh, Willie's Deceit, each Goonie has two or more damage than I can do an End of Nigh roll. Once I play one of these cards, in order to do an End of Nigh, as Nigh roll, I'm going to gather all three of the red dice. From there, just as normal, I can choose to spend GM tokens to upgrade those dice. So for example, let's go ahead and spend one GM token, and I'll upgrade one of these reds to a blue. Then I can again do that again as much as I want to. Once I'm satisfied with the dice that I have, I'll go ahead and give those a roll. And if I roll two or more successes, then I have passed that end of my roll, and I'll get to move a sand marker down on the hourglass. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then again, one of the... Uh, teenage cards can be refreshed if one of them has been used at this point. And then this is going to be discarded to the discard pile. Now, if, for example, let's say that I had failed that test, then this is going to, this card will be shuffled back into the GM deck, and I can redraw this at a later point. And again, at this point, in order for the GM to win, all four of the hourglass markers must be on the bottom side of the hourglass, at the beginning of a GM's turn. So even if I would have placed the last sand marker down here during my turn, it would move back over to the Goonies to start their new round, and they'll have that last final round to try to win the game. But if at, the, at that point it moves over to my round again, and I start my round with all four sand markers down, I have won the game and defeated the Goonies. There's a couple of additional tokens that I want to go over as well. The first are pit tokens. When a pit token is placed into a room that has a goonie, or a goonie moves into a room with a pit token, they must make a dexterity one check or be trapped. So with Mikey being in that room, he would have to make a dexterity check. If he passes, everything is fine. If he fails, then he becomes trapped and a trap token is placed next to him. Foes are not affected by pit tokens. When a Goonie is in a room with a flooded token, they must spend two Wish tokens instead of one when upgrading a die or giving teamwork. Goonies in other rooms are unaffected, even if they are giving teamwork to a Goonie in a flooded room, in situations with a dangerous passage or removing rubble tokens. Foes are not affected by flooded tokens. With stunned tokens, a Goonie that is stunned cannot use cards, special abilities, or give teamwork. If a, if a Goonie becomes stunned during their turn, their turn immediately ends. And if a Goonie or a Foe starts their turn or activation with a Stunned Token, then they're going to have to skip both of their actions, and then they can discard that Stunned Token. With Goonies, after a Stunned Token is removed, a Goonie may still use item cards, treasure cards, and special abilities in the same turn, as long as they don't require an action to use. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below. If you'd like to see the game in action, I also have a link up in the top corner to a playthrough that me and my teammate did playing through the very first scenario. So if you'd like to see how the game plays in action, check that out as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.